Hey guys, it's Andre from the High Performance Academy and we're here with Jason from Mercury Racing. Now, we wanted past Mercury stand and this Ultima GTR caught my eye straight away. Jason, it's an amazing looking car and you guys are uh, responsible for the engine package in it, I believe? That's correct. Okay, so Mercury, I know you guys from uh, your your uh, marine applications, obviously that's where you've made your name, but uh, this is far from a boat, so how did, the, how did that change? How did you get involved in an automotive application? Well, we started by releasing this engine three years ago, um, and it's a dual overhead cam, nine liter, and we started getting uh, requests from uh, some of the lunatic fringe for uh, extreme power in a vehicle and so we're here uh, looking to offer that in the aftermarket. So, so we're talking 9 litre V8, 4 cams, so it's a quad cam engine and twin turbo chargers. How, how much power is it producing? Uh, right now it's conservatively uh, rated at 1650 horsepower uh, and that's you know for several hundred hours of wide open throttle. I mean that's not a sweep type of a bump number on a dyno. I mean it's it can do that uh, over the ocean, so you know that's what it's made for. That's um, there's a lot of power for um, any car, so that should uh, get it going pretty well. Now you mentioned the the application, you know, coming from marine, the engines are getting a lot more of a beating than they'll get in a car. So, what do you do with your engine design to make them reliable for that sort of two or three hundred hours? And we're talking a lot of wide open throttle, full power running. What do you do there? Well, it starts with the design, and we spend a lot of time doing uh, computer modeling, uh, CFD, and, and finite element analysis on components and stress analysis. Um, then once we actually have the parts tooled up, uh, we do a lot of validation. Uh, we have uh, applications and test tanks where we and dynos where we just uh, we pound them and uh, instrument them. You know, while they're instrumented, we just really uh, record everything and. If there's any weak spot, it's remedied before production still. When you're going to from a marine application to an automotive application, is there anything fundamentally different with the way you design an engine between those two applications? Uh, yes, uh, I would say probably one of the main ones is around the cooling system, um, because uh, typically, obviously, in a car, you know, you're limited to how long you can actually stay at a, a high load. And so, you know, you're in a little bit better position heat-wise. Um, so we make sure that we really have the heat transfer uh, correct and manage the, the cooling as well as the oil temperatures and, and uh, a lot of the lubrication aspects of it. So, so the fundamentals, though, the cylinder heads, the crankcase, etc. There's there's no difference between your marine application. Um, we use heavier duty components, but but you know. Uh, from a physics aspect, right, it's, uh, you know, we're flowing air and making power, it's the same, um, but, you know, we look just for heavier duty components on, on valves and, and other pieces like that, and especially for the environmental aspects of it. So. Let's talk a little bit about the turbochargers on this car. What, what sort of turbos are fitted and what sort of boost pressure are you using to realize that 1600 horsepower? Well, we we uh, have Garrett turbos, and we have our own housings, uh, obviously water cooled on the marine, and uh, unjacketed for the the car. Um, and the turbo pressure varies. Uh, we try right now. We've got really short cams in it for uh, emissions and for uh, drive availability on the low end. Where uh, in a boat, uh, the docking and the shifting is very critical, and so. Uh, we've got, we're right now we're probably in the 20 pound area for, but if we could give it a little more camshaft, you know, it's, uh, we've seen some crazy numbers there, but, so. And you're just running this on a normal pump fuel, normal pump gasoline? That's correct, yeah. The, the 1650 runs uh, race fuel, uh, the 1350 runs pump gas. So ultimately how far could you go with this engine if you really wanted to lean on it? Um, well, we've seen some bump numbers, you know, you're just uh, not trying, but when we were uh, developing our electronic boost control, uh, we we kind of leaned on a little bit and we, we were up over the 2500 very quickly, so. Um, That's a huge amount of power. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't, I don't imagine you'd really need that in a, a road car anyway. But um, interesting, you just mentioned your electronic boost control, which is one of the other things I wanted to talk about. That's quite unusual. Most, uh, most boost control is done with a, a normal mechanical diaphragm style wastegate. You're using electronic control. Why have you gone to the electronic wastegates? Uh, primarily, you know, for the, to get rid of the, any lag. Uh, and it's, uh, since we have electronic throttles, um, we have two electronic throttles. And um, since we have that, we're able to uh, schedule the positioning of both the wastegates and the throttles to optimize the turbine speed. And in that way, we pretty much uh, reduce the lag to imperceptible. So, I guess when you've got nine liters as well, that's going to help spool those turbochargers up too. Now, let's uh, talk about engine management. How are you actually controlling this engine? What's the electronics package? Uh, we have our own electronics package. Um, it's a Visteon-based box that uh, we've designed ourselves uh, or specified it ourselves with uh, co-designed with Visteon uh, for the environmental aspects of it and for the, the input and output configurations that, that we need in the marine world. Um, we do all this our own software, all our own harnessing um, and all of that, so as well as you know gauges and, and everything we have on CAN network. Um, so it's very integrated with the vessel. Now you've talked a couple of times about emissions and obviously we're, we're in the US here and emissions is a really big thing. When you're building an engine for a marine application are you still um, bound by those same emission standards or are you free to do whatever you want? Uh, no, we have, uh, there's emission rules that need to be met. Um, there's different levels. Um, generally it's more stringent for uh, engines less than 500 horsepower. And you'll see most Mercury engines, uh, less than that, is, are uh, catalyzed and uh, full closed loop control and everything. So um, very automotive-like in that regard. Um, these engines are so far exempt from the catalyst if we can meet uh, the emission uh, requirements. Um, and we're, we're able to do that through the four valve uh, design and, and the combustion chamber. So. Okay, Jason, look, it's, um, it's an amazing looking engine and uh, that's some huge power. I'd certainly love to uh, grab the keys at some stage and take it for a drive. Thanks a lot for taking the time to chat to us. We'll leave you to it. Thank you so much, Andre. For online tuning courses, visit learntotune.com.